Okay, we were able to get the right character and we found our first bottle of acid in this bathroom sink here. Oh god, oh god, oh god, oh god. Hello guys and welcome to episode 4 of the 7 Days to Die Survival Guide. In today's episode I'm going to be going over the workbench, I'm probably going to be getting a mini bike at the end of today but we need to get ourselves some acid and coal. We're also going to be checking the traders because it is day 4 and they will have restocked and because it's day 4 we'll be getting our supply drop today so if that comes today and it's close we'll go for that as well. As I was wandering around here during the night looking for some wood, I noticed that in the distance, by the way. For those of you who don't know, that is the Shamway Foods... Almost on cue, we are hungry. That is the Shamway Foods factory um, headquarters, I believe it's called. It's a pretty dangerous POI. It, I believe it's tier 5, which is the highest tier. But it does have some decent loot, but it's not the best POI in the game to loot. But we might go there at some point soon, but probably not in today's episode. Before I go any further in today's episode though, I'm going to explain how to plant trees, because I just chopped some down and realised I got some saplings or seeds I suppose. So with trees, you don't need anything special, you simply select the seed in your inventory and you press it down, like that. And now trees can only be grown three blocks apart. So I'm just going to plant these, so that we can get some more wood in future. So I'm going to head back to the house and I'm going to introduce you guys to the workbench. And here it is, the workbench. Now it's kind of being cut off by this beverage cooler but that doesn't matter. So if we press E on the workbench you'll see that it's essentially another crafting interface. In the workbench you can queue up crafting of basically anything you could create in your inventory as well as that, you get access to more advanced things like the iron pickaxe. And as you can see, during the night, I went out and I crafted an iron pick with some forged iron we made in the forge. So how do you make a workbench? Well, if we search it here, you can see that the workbench requires 25 forged iron, 20 mechanical parts, a wrench, a claw hammer, and 50 wood. So yeah, to make this, I did sacrifice my wrench, but I think I have all the car parts I'll be needing to make the mini bike. the last thing we need is acid and coal. The claw hammer I made in the last episode, I didn't show it on screen but I made it while I was out looting because I had some forged iron from destroying workbenches. It takes 4 minutes to craft and when you're done you can place it anywhere on a 2x1 surface. Some of the things I'm interested in getting out of here are obviously the mini bike and all of its subsequent parts. We have almost everything we need, we just need wheels which we need some special parts for. Other than that, we also want to get our hands on an iron sledgehammer because I have skull crusher rank 1, I am able to craft an iron sledgehammer. It's quite expensive on the forged iron though so I want to prioritise getting our mini bike first. Um, also, to get this iron pickaxe, I had to unlock it with Miner 69er. I believe there is an iron tool schematic that exists, but I can't recall ever actually seeing it. So, what does the pickaxe do? Well, the pickaxe, as you would expect, is good for collecting ores and rock. It's better than the stone axe at collecting rock, but not as good as the stone axe for collecting wood. For wood, you need to make yourself an iron fire axe, and that is not too high on my priority list. Also, finally, we were able to get the right character to be on the survival guide. This is Man 1. That is his name. He is Man 1. Now, let's cover his face back up. Now, once the trader opens, we're going to go over there and see what he has for sale. I'm hoping he has some acid available there because that would really shorten the looting time for me. Now, where can you get acid if the trader doesn't have any? Well, the same places you find wrenches. Wrenches are obviously found in kitchen sinks and so is bottles of acid. So we're going to be probably starting some kind of time lapse today with me looting some kitchens until I find, I believe I need two bottles of acid because we need two wheels. Let's see, yeah, so the wheels take one minute to craft, they require two forged iron, 16 scrap polymers, two oil, 10 coal, and one bottle of acid. Acid is definitely going to be the difficult part of that crafting recipe. But coal is also slightly difficult. Not necessarily difficult, but I just have to make sure I find some. So coal looks similar to those small boulders in the background, if you can see them, but it's much every time every damn time but it's much darker it's a very 
very matte black. So I'm going to collect this stone here because I just realized it's here. Because we're going to need this soon to make cement. So I'm going to grab that. Or rather, I shouldn't say cement. We're going to need it to make crushed sand, which will combine with this cement, this real cement here, for a cement mix. As you can see, I still have the fatigue effect because I haven't managed to find any vitamins yet. Hopefully, Trader Bob has some. One thing I should mention, by the way, about iron tools is that the higher level tool or weapon you have, the more stamina it takes to use it. So this iron pickaxe requires a lot more stamina than the stone axe, but it does do a lot more damage. I'm also going to come in here and buy these rock busters. That is a 20% bonus in mining harvest. We'll need that at some point, so I might as well get it now. So we'll go straight to a secret stash. So he's got the motorcycle handlebars, which is pretty interesting. But I'm not interested in that just yet. So there's nothing in here that I want. Let's check his other tabs. These rebar frames do interest me, but I think I'll avoid buying them while I have such a low amount of money. An anvil, that really does interest me. I think I might already have an anvil. The anvil gives you 50% forge crafting speed, which is pretty good. The advanced bellows give you 50% forge smelting speed. I really want both of those, but I don't think I'm going to go into that just right now. Okay, so he's not got really anything I want aside from things like concrete mix or the anvil and advanced bellows. I think I'm just going to waste my money on these advanced bellows. Y'all come back now. Shell Bob. The reason I want those advanced bellows is that the smelting time can be pretty annoying. So I'm going to go back, get some food and water, and then we'll go out, try and find some acid and coal. And we found our first bottle of acid in this bathroom sink here, along with some nitrate. One down, two to go. found our first piece of eyewear. These shades, which are pink, give you plus one perception. What that basically means is while you're wearing it, you effectively have plus one to your perception attribute. That does mean that you can unlock perks that require that level of perception. As long as you are wearing the glasses, you will still get the effects, but if you take the glasses off, you'll stop getting the effects. Now, as you'll just seen on the screen there, I got a 5.5 times sneak attack bonus there. If I haven't already mentioned it, you get sneak attack damage, but with knives, you get a plus 400% bonus. Now, it's important to note that it's not just 400%, it's plus 400%. So the sneak attack damage multiplier you already get plus 400% sneak attack damage. And that's why I was able to kill him so quickly. By the way, if you're watching this and wondering why I keep stabbing all the paintings, first of all, you get a little bit of XP for it, so it might, might as well do it. But sometimes the game hides treasure slash loot behind those, so I always think it's worth the quick stab to see what's hiding behind it. And you get a little bit of wood from it as well. So... When I stab this guy, you see blood starts spurting out of him. That's because knives do bleeding damage. And it's pretty good. Knives are a seriously underrated weapon in Seven Days to, seven days to Die. Now, I'm not going to specialise in them because they require the agility attribute, and I'm focusing mainly on strength, but they are really underrated. I am going to put the current perk I have, however, into... I think I'm going to actually go for Sexual Tyrannosaurus. Reduce melee and tool stamina usage by 8% and power attacks by 15%. That is huge. This is one of the best perks in the game. So 
swear if I was playing at consistent frame rate, these zombies would never hit me. Whoa. Always fun to vary your weapons in Seven Days to Die. Using this knife has been quite enjoyable. Let's hope for some acid in this sink. Come on. Fingers crossed. Ah. Oh. I mean, I won't say no to shotgun shells, but it's not acid. Ugh. Ah, vitamins. Vitamins. However the fuck you say it. So, vitamins, first of all, they cure fatigue, which is a disease I've had for about an episode and a half now, and they also give you 100% disease resistance for 12 minutes. Pretty good. This, by the way, is a splint. It heals broken arms or legs. But it's not as good as the cast, because this doesn't protect against further injury. The cast, I think, anyway, does. I've never made a cast, because... Honestly, splints are good enough in my opinion. Oh, here's the loot room. Right, let's search these garment bags first of all. The college jacket, plus 10% run speed. But really bad heat resistance. I actually think, even though I'm wearing the leather duster, I'm going to put this on. And I'm going to take the leather duster, because it is still a really useful thing. But to make up for my lack of heat resistance, I think I'm going to put this cap on. In fact, no, I'll keep my helmet on until... Sorry. This is a modification for helmets that makes it look like a ball cap and it gives it these effects. Once I have a level 3 or 4 helmet, which will allow me to put another mod on, I'll put this hat on to compensate for my lack of heat resistance. The reason I'm putting this college jacket on, again, once again, I'm just going to point this out to be really clear, plus 10% run speed. That's pretty good. If you can stack that with a few other effects, you're going to be moving at a very agreeable speed. Okay, this is actually a pretty rare find. A drum magazine mod at this level, if I was to attach it to, say, an AK-47, if I found one, it would have about 60 rounds per magazine. This is a treasure, that is not getting sold. What do we have? Ah, the triple armor pocket mod. You'll love to see it. Right, I'm going to explain that now. Come back to this loop. So the triple armor pocket mod goes on armor, and you put it on just any of these slots, and watch these dark slots here, the ones that are considered encumbrance slots. And now we are slightly less encumbered because our effective inventory capacity has been increased by three by that triple armor pocket mod. This is a wood splitter mod, I believe I've already explained that. This is a foregrip mod. It improves the handling and accuracy on weapons when firing from the hip or moving. I'll probably just chuck that on the shotgun if it'll take it. I forgot I have to take it, don't I? <laughs> I have to take it out of the box first. And i just seen the journal entry there for that. Let me compare these beforehand so I can show you. I just saw the journal entry for airdrop, so there it is there, 500 meters away. We'll probably go and get that. So I just wanted to show you beforehand. This is the hip fire accuracy. Let me find something I can compare it against. Um, let's see, if we do this, it's about the size of that reinforced chest, right? Let me just get the right there. Now, if we put that foregrip on, we should see a slight tightening of that accuracy. We also get plus two damage because gripping a mod will always increase your damage. It looks like it's slightly tightened, just ever so slightly. I'm going to scrap that, take this, take this, take this, and earlier on I said the bow gave you plus 400%, it's plus 200%. It's only knives that give you that plus 400%, which makes sense because they're a very risky weapon to use after all. Stealthily, anyway. And lastly we have our Shotgun Messiah Sealed Shipping Crates. They really just want to confuse you with those names. Okay, we've got a Bandolier mod, I'll explain that while I'm here as well. The Bandolier mod gives you, I believe, 15% faster reload, and it can be in installed on chest and leg armor. Problem is, I don't have leg armor, and my chest mod has a triple armor pocket mod, which is much more useful in my opinion. So, let's go outside, and maybe we could run to that airdrop. In fact, I remember these were all covered in spikes, so I'm going to go out a different door here.
Oh God, oh God, oh God, oh God. Oh dear Lord Jesus Christ. Keep running, keep running. Yeah, beware dog, how ironic. Fuck you, wolves. Wait, what am I doing? Come on, then. I remember to load it this time. These are wolves. They're absolutely terrifying. Dogs are really dangerous because they're fast as fuck. You're also made of meat. Shotguns are designed to kill meat. Okay, we got some leg armor, at least. We got another head armor. We got some clothing for our feet. I'm gonna take this and this, I can scrap that, and then the box explodes just like that. I'm gonna kill this guy really quickly. Some food. Thank you, random shack on the side of the road. Now this is a really good POI I wish I knew about last episode. This is Bart's Bart's? Bart's salvage. The reason this is amazing is this engine right here is literally just an engine. If you use a wrench on it, you get an engine, but I traded my wrench in for a workbench, so we're not going to be able to do that. I feel like there's going to be a dog in there, I can't remember. I'm just not going to fuck with that just now. I think since we didn't get acid, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a few jobs from Trader Bob tomorrow and that will allow some of the loot to respawn in these POIs, particularly the houses, meaning I can find more opportunities to get some acid. Now it's not only in kitchen sinks, for example, that this place that, that spawns acid. I'm going to mark this eye here. But it certainly is one of the more reliable places to find it. Oh, Ranger's Guide to Archery. Learn this trick to safely remove 20% more arrows and bolts from your target. So basically, if you kill someone with a bow, you can have a chance to take some arrows back, and this increases that chance. Useless for me, because I never use bows. Scrap that, and I am collecting that apparently, so let's just take it. And one coin. Why not? And we've leveled up. What I'm actually going to do is something I tend to not like to do, but I'm going to take a rank of Master Chef because as you can see, I'm starving to death. But we did just get a grill and we do have a lot of wolves worth of um, meat now. So I think I can craft up a decent amount of food to keep us going for the next few days so I don't have to keep looting for canned, mm, canned food. Wish we could go into these now it's just occurred to me that these food places probably have kitchens which means they probably have chance to spawn acid as well so we might come here tomorrow and raid those hopefully i'll be able to get a mini bike by the end of tomorrow i hope to have one by the end of the day but the acid was just not spawning if you guys really want to know how to get a mini bike though remember that my first video on this channel 
was a guide on how to get a mini bike very quickly. On that video, I got a mini bike by day three. Oh, every time! I got a mini bike by day three, although I'm quite confident if you were really focused and lucky, you could get it by the end of the first day. If you're interested in that, I'll put an annotation on the top right and I'm going to kill this idiot. And then we'll go inside. I think tomorrow we're going to start making our base once we've got that mini bike up and running as well. Oh, that just cleared up my inventory entirely. I'm going to take this meat away. Um, where is the grill? Did I already put it somewhere else? Here it is. Just gonna dump some stuff in here again. I'll sort this out at some point. Oh, we actually have some eggs as well, that's good. We can make bacon and eggs with that, which is a decent healing, uh, decent food item. Although, food does its healing items as well. I'm gonna put this anvil in the forge as well before we go. Come over here. The anvil goes in the second slot and this one increases the crafting speed. So smelting speed increases the speed that things get put into this part. Crafting speed is how fast it crafts things. So now forged iron takes point takes four seconds rather than six. Which doesn't quite mathematically add up, but that's what the game says. So I'm gonna also have a look in here for any iron I may have collected. Yep. Cause I'll need some more forged iron, so I want to scrap some more regular iron things and put them in there. Oh, I had the grill on my hotbar actually, I must have already had a grill. Turn this on, split the iron stack and we'll smelt that up. Next we have our campfire again. We're going to put the grill in here. Can I put them both in? I can. That doesn't affect it if you have more than one, it's just a good place to store them. I'm going to go first of all and get as much bacon and eggs as I can. I unlock this with the Master Chef recipe. I'm just going to craft that up because I might as well use the eggs. And then I'm going to put as much grilled meat as I can at once here. So each piece of grilled meat requires five raw meat, yeah. So we'll be able to make 20 pieces and that's solid amount of food. We'll be set for the next few days at least with that. But with that done guys, subscribe if you enjoyed today's video and want to stay up to date with the 7 days to die survival guide. Leave a like if you're enjoying this series so I know to keep making it. Like I've said before, I don't want to make a video if you guys just don't even want to watch it. It just doesn't make sense. You're wasting my time and you're wasting your own. So definitely give me some feedback on the series so I keep it going. But with that guys, I will see you in a tutorial video on Saturday and then again in the survival guide on the following Wednesday. Goodbye and have a great day.